So welcome to this talk and uh, this webinar on intermittent fasting. Uh, so let's talk about it. Uh, first of all, a little bit, I want to tell you a little bit about who I am. I'm Trevor Hausauer. I'm a family nurse practitioner here in Fargo, North Dakota. My practice is Valley Vital Medicine. Uh, I concentrate on functional medicine and optimizing, optimizing health. Um, so a little bit about my background when I grew up in my family, I had a brother who had, uh, had a disability uh, called Farr's disease. And as a part of his disability, uh, that really plugged us really closely into the, uh, the medical infrastructure. And we had a lot of experiences with uh, doctors and nurses and other health, uh, health providers. And for some of those experiences, they were amazing. They were great. Uh, for other experiences, uh, they left something to be desired. And so, um, I, you know, that really left an imprint on me as I was growing up. And we continued to work with the, uh, the medical structure and visit with different doctors and healthcare providers. And those positive experiences, they were so pronounced that they just left an, a lasting impact. But those negative experiences were really ones that, you know, we went home and it was just deflating. And I'm not sure if any of you have experienced that, but uh, it's, it's just so hard to deal with sometimes. And uh, so, like I said, that just left a lasting impact on me um, as I was going to school. Uh, then, you know, my heart just really turned to how, how can I help other people to have the most positive experience that they can in that kind of a setting? And so initially started out, I thought I wanted to do medical school, um, but soon found out that, you know what, I don't want to go to school for 10, 12 years um, to get started. Uh, and God really lined things up for me to get into nursing school, got into nursing school, started into in the emergency department and then in the ICU and really saw a lot of people with um, chronic diseases that were in the hospital because they had uh, an acute exacerbation or worsening of their condition. And so as I thought about things, I said, you know, how can I help these people now not get to this point? And so as I was thinking about that, I was like, you know, the best thing or the best way of doing that, I think, is to, um, is to go back to school and try to get, oh, get a hold of patients, get a hold of people and teach them how to avoid being in the hospital. And so I went back and decided to go back for my nurse practitioner schooling. And uh, while I was in nurse practitioner schooling, I was doing some more research and actually I was doing some clinical instruction with one of my instructors and uh, we were going through case studies and talking about things and we were talking about, you know, how, how can, uh, how do we best take care of the patient with whatever condition? And so we would talk through our case plan and um, come up with the best treatment plan that we could for this person. But as we were going through that and she would agree or make some suggestions, but at the end of it, you know, a lot of times she would say, well, and sometimes I would add this. And sometimes that this was magnesium or was, uh, ashwagandha or some other adaptogenic herb or some other labs to look at. And I said, what in the world is this? And uh, so I inquired a little bit more and she had me turn on, uh, she turned me on to the Institute for Functional Medicine. And so I really started diving in there and I really came to love the philosophy of functional medicine, what it is, the fact that we're looking to optimize human condition. We're not looking to just name a disease and, and give a pharmaceutical prescription. And, you know, we take a lot of lifestyle and diet and all those things into account. And so that has really brought me to where I'm at today. About a year ago, I started this practice. And uh, since then, it's been, it's been a lot of fun and have been able to, to uh, grow that practice and been able to impact people's lives, I think, in a special way. And so that, that's, that's who I am. 
Um, a little bit about my heart, love helping people, love helping people to get to be healthier. And a lot of times we just use the free stuff, right? We use diet and exercise and lifestyle stuff. And so that's why we're here today. We're talking about fasting. So um, as we get started, I just want to make sure that we understand that um, th this webinar today is uh, it's informative. Uh, I'm not giving medical advice or telling you to uh, start doing a um, intermittent fasting diet. I don't know if it's appropriate for you. It may be. Um, so you'll just have to deduce for yourself. And if you're questioning it, I really encourage you to uh, visit with your medical provider, uh, whether it's a doctor, or nurse practitioner, or whoever's helping you with your health, um, particularly if you're on medications, make sure you visit with those people before you start on uh, a diet like this. But the idea is during this class, uh, you'll gain a better idea. Uh, let's see. Uh, you'll gain a better idea as to um, how to readily incorporate intermittent fasting if it's for you into your fitness, your wellness program, or, or whether it's for weight loss. Uh, we're going to help you try to achieve your goals with improving your, your function. Uh, so as we get started here, I'm actually, I'm going to go ahead and go in here. I'm going to stop my video and uh, just encourage you guys just to, to listen in and uh, feel free that in the chat uh, to go ahead and type in questions whenever you have them. And I will make sure that we get to those um, probably at the end. But as questions come to you or you have comments, please just go ahead and put those in the chat and we will get to them as we can. First, what is intermittent fasting? Intermittent fasting is heralded as one of the most effective ways to lose weight and get your body into shape. Simply put, intermittent fasting, it's not a diet, it's an eating pattern. Where did it come from? Well, believe it or not, intermittent fasting is derived from the eating patterns of our ancestors, the hunter-gatherers. Their eating patterns relied on an ever-changing and often unreliable abundance of food. And such, uh, they, went, they often went a long period of time uh, without eating. When they did make a kill or find food, they often ate and shared their catch and whatever, uh, whatever they were able to find amongst their entire tribe at one time. So let's keep in mind that they didn't have any preservation methods or spices. Some days they may not have had a catch or a kill for them to eat and therefore they had unintentional periods of fasting. The following day they would have to track, hunt, and search for unknown lengths of time in order to try and produce some catch. A level of activity combined with food intake which kept them lean and agile throughout their whole lives. These eating patterns are thus ingrained into our DNA. Part of us knows that overeating is never and was never a sustainable or natural thing to do. Surprisingly, our bodies actually react positively to lengthy periods without sustenance, provided there is no mental stress or tension involved during these times. That's a pretty major caveat. Thus, the new phenomenon of intermittent fasting is actually based on an old evolution of ham humankind, a good argument for anyone who is trying to coin it, a good argument against anyone trying to coin it as a new fad diet. There are numerous studies that show the benefits of diets based on intermittent fasting, yet as with any eating pattern, it doesn't come without its shortfalls. We'll be outlining some of the advantages, disadvantages, and more of the in and more of intermittent fasting. Try to keep an open mind and get ready to learn a little bit about what intermittent fasting and if it's for you. So how does it work? Intermittent fasting generally involves varying periods of fasting interspersed by shorter windows of eating, during which 
calorie deficiency for the, the period of fasting time is accounted for. So there are several cycles of this which have proven to work for those who are seeking to lose weight or for other health benefits. By adjusting the pattern and frequency by which you consume your meals, you prolong the period of fasting generally reserved for nighttime. And you restrict your eating hours to a shorter period during the day. As a general rule to which all weight loss programs will agree, the best way to create weight loss is to restrict the number of calories consumed and then take into account the amount of activity that you've undergone. Intermittent fasting is no different. The restriction of calories play, takes place between fasting hours and helps the body to digest and assimilate what was consumed during the non-fasting hours properly. The important part of this cycle is to ensure that the meals you eat in between fasting periods are balanced and contain enough nutrients and minerals to see your body through to the next through the next period of fasting. There are numerous arguments for both for and against these patterns, and those cause disagreement, those disagreements and discontent in the diet and fitness world. So it's worth learning as much as you can to see if they suit you, your lifestyle, and weight loss goals before committing to a period of intermittent fasting. As it wouldn't be fair to focus solely on the negatives, this kind of dieting has ultimately provided some participants with certain levels of success. So we'll start by detailing some of the positive outcomes observed by diets of intermittent fasting. Some aspects of intermittent fasting that the media has directed attention to is the fact that almost all people undertaking a period of intermittent fasting have experienced the following. Lower incidence of cardiac complications, lower risk of developing diabetes, lower levels of inflammation and joint pain, loss of excessive belly fat. In addition to these positives, intermittent fasting can help to regulate imbalanced hormonal and cellular function. This can be observed when after not eating for a period of time, your body initiates important cellular repair processes and changes hormone levels to make stored body fat more accessible. While fasting for a certain amount of time inevitably sends the body into weight loss mode, as existing fat cells and hormones are called, to, called into use to replace the depleted amount of energy that the body is receiving in the form of calories. The sustained period of time with no caloric intake followed by a significant intake sends the metabolism into overdrive and as such burns more during digestion than would normally occur in, in a normal diet. While the overall benefits of intermittent fasting seem to be largely positive and it's even recommended by some medical professionals, and I recommend it for some of my patients. There are, as there should be with most weight loss programs, some downsides to be aware of. One of the most appealing factors of intermittent fasting is that during the non-fasting hours, the meals you eat aren't necessarily specified as having to contain any particular number of calories. However, you do have to keep those balanced. This means that while prepping everything isn't a requirement, you still need to be relatively smart about the foods and the portions you concern, consume during the non-fasting hours. Just because you've built up a calorie deficit over the fasting period doesn't mean you can eat anything you like for eight hours and have no consequences. This is where most people fail with intermittent fasting. So it helps to be aware that it's not only during the fasting hours that awareness of the body's hunger cues must be observed. Intermittent fasting can also elevate the likelihood of developing or worsening eating disorders. And so much of intermittent fasting revolves around controlling and maintaining certain levels of food intake. So there's a fine line between when obsession overeating and not eating 
during your fasting and non-fasting days becomes heightened enough to become similar to an eating disordered thinking. Perhaps the most well-known version of intermittent fasting was originally suggested in the book, Eight Hour Diet by a guy by the name of David Zinksenko. In his book, he suggested that leaving longer periods between meals allows the body to process food and break down any excess fat cells properly is preferable to eating more numerous smaller meals through the day. Good news. The good news is that for those sticking to the 16 and eight diet, you sleep through most of that 16 hour window where you're fasting. The idea is that if you follow a pattern of not eating early in the morning and then starting eating at 11 a.m. or 12, then confining any subsequent meals to within that eight hour period, make sure you leave two hours after your last meal before bedtime and following the same pattern the next day would be the ideal way of eating. Simply put, the 16 and eight method pretty much revolves around skipping breakfast and then ensuring your last meal is consumed at least two hours prior to when you go to bed. Sounds pretty easy, right? It is. The main challenge people face during a period of the 16 and eight dieting or fasting is during the window of fasting in the morning. For anyone who has become accustomed to the breakfast like a king rule, the fitness media, which the fitness media has shared with us for many years, this might present itself as a challenge. However, if the other meals the previous day have been nutrient dense enough to provide both enough nutrition and also to satiate your hunger, the morning fasting period should be a little bit easier. It takes time to figure out which kinds of foods will successfully see your energy levels through the following afternoon. So don't give up if you find it hard for the first few days. The biggest question that most people have when they're fast hungry is what can I eat during my eight hour eating window? Another positive element of this diet is that your calories really aren't restricted during your eating hours. Both meals and snacks can be consumed with the only guideline being that they consist of healthy, balanced and portion controlled. There are no forbidden foods on this diet, but professionals would recommend only that you avoid, that you avoid overindulgence as much as possible. The urge to overeat or binge can arise after a period of fasting. And so 16 and eight dieters must be aware of this danger and help to lower the likelihood of them binging. If it helps for you to break your fast initially with a light snack instead of a heavy meal, this can help avoid the urge to binge later on. Liquids are okay during the 16 hour fasting. In fact, I want you to drink lots of water, but other non calorific or in other words, uh, liquids that don't have any calories can be consumed such as black tea, black coffee or water. You just have to make sure there's no sugar and artificial sweeteners don't help either. So, but that helps to make your time while you're fasting go by much easier. It also helps to take your time while you're eating. Savor each bite and even take a few minutes to break in the middle of your meal to allow digestion to begin. As studies have shown, this is beneficial for overall gut and mental health as well as weight loss. The fact that the author of this diet states that types of food don't matter too much seems vastly contradictory to pretty much any other kind of healthy diet plan we've ever seen. But I'm sure that eating three meals of fried, sugary, and fatty foods during your eating window 
would lead to significantly different results than someone who's using common sense and eating healthy foods. As with all intermittent fasts, this diet is not suited to anyone with unstable or unreliable blood sugar, as low levels during fasting hours can lead to complications. What about breakfast? So many studies in recent years have indicated the benefits of consuming breakfast within an hour of waking. So it can be hard to change the thought and habit patterns to suit this new mindset. So the trick here, well, just try it. And if it works without too much anxiety, then you can hope for more success with the 16 and eight eating pattern. Repeated eating patterns become easier for the body and the mind to adjust to. As with any diet plan, so 16 and eight can prove challenging at the beginning. Another popular type of intermittent fasting is the five and two diet. This option involves fasting completely for two entire days a week and following your normal diet patterns on other days. During the fasting days, dieters are recommended to only drink water and non-calorific liquids and refrain from overexertion. The other days of the week can be considered much alike to the eating window of the 16 and eight diet. That is to ensure that all meals taken during this period are healthy, balanced, and are not used as an excuse to overeat after a period of not eating. Also known as the eat, stop, eat diet, the theory here is that the days where food is not ingested are seen as a means of letting the body properly absorb and rest from digestion. The negatives here include long periods of fasting being initially extremely challenging for new dieters. So if this is the case, it's best to allow for a gradual weaning to the diet to ensure maximum effect. So anyone with existing anxiety, sleep, or blood sugar issues probably should avoid this type of diet. The longer fasting periods can also make it more tempting to binge after a fast. So it's worth noting that it takes a lot of willpower to control. What do you think? Is this a diet that you would consider trying? Let me, let me see a couple responses. Has anybody tried this or thought about it? Would you? Looking for a couple answers in the chat. Christina, yeah, would be concerned about blood sugar. Concerned about self-discipline as well. Yeah, I think it'd be hard. I've done some of the eight hour, 12 hour intermittent fasting with this five and two, I haven't tried yet. Considering it though. Another diet, the alternate day fasting. And this is exactly what it sounds like, fasting on every alternate day as opposed to set days of the week. Many doctors will advise against this method for anyone completely new to the fasting technique as full fasting every other day is a bit extreme for our bodies unaccustomed to its effects. There are many different versions of this kind of fast. However, but some of which will allow up to 500 calories actually on that fasting day. Many health professionals maintain that this method is inadvisable for long-term weight loss pursuits, as the frequency of fasting periods lean towards an unhealthy habit and shouldn't be attempted without having tried fasting previously. Uh, Angie says, I couldn't do the five and two, you manage about 14 hours of fasting, okay. The warrior diet. This one consists of fasting completely through the day and eating one large meal at nighttime. 
The thinking behind this one comes from a similar origin to the 16 and 8 diet. The warrior reflex of the human body having been accustomed to long periods without food in times before ready-made meals and grocery stores were commonplace and easily accessible. Ori Hofmeckler was the first person to popularize this diet. He emphasized the importance of consuming light, low-calorie snacks during the day, such as plain fruits and vegetables, and then eating one large balanced meal at nighttime. This permitted or, or rec, the permitted or recommended food groups for the large balanced meal should include ingredients similar to those consumed on a, a paleo diet. Unprocessed natural whole foods that would have been accessible by some of our earliest ancestors in what is considered the Paleolithic period. How to start an intermittent fast. So a large part of successful intermittent fasting is centered around creating the right mentality. As with any new diet or eating plan, you can't expect to see immediate results. We are creatures of habit and shifting away from your normal eating and exercise regimen or lack thereof can take time to adjust to. This is more of a mental thing than physical. As the recent studies on getting rid of the diet mentality suggests. But intermittent fasting doesn't have to be so hard. It's important, however, to understand that you can't just decide you're fasting if you accidentally miss or skip breakfast or another large meal. This kind of false justification rarely works. Now we're talking about in your own head and your mentality. Okay. This generally results in severe troughs in energy levels and even binges and spikes in your blood sugars. The best way to go about starting an intermittent fast is to plan it out ahead of schedule. Start your eating pattern on a Monday, for example, and spend, spend the Sunday prior to it getting yourself more educated on what exactly it is that you're getting yourself in for. Make yourself aware of all the potential outcomes, potential reactions, both positive and negative, and consult medical advice if you're unsure about whether or not intermittent fasting is something that could work for you. Seek your doctor's advice before you want to start something like this. The following conditions are signs that you probably should not try intermittent fasting. If you're pregnant or breastfeeding, if you have a history with an eating disorder, if you have diabetes or issues with blood sugar levels, if you're prone to anxiety, or if you're prone to fainting, okay? It's not for everybody. And as so much of dieting is focused around negative emotions and punishment, right, for slip ups or deviations from the diet, it's so important to establish a healthy mindset surrounding weight loss before trying intermittent fasting. Successful weight loss, and that means sustainable long term weight loss that stays lost, generally centers around creating a positive lifestyle change that incorporate healthy eating and automatically lend themselves to weight loss. This involves not only diet, but also activity, environmental factors, and most importantly, mentality. Get out of your own head. It's so important with us. Intermittent fasting can be used as one of these lifestyle changes. A simple eating pattern that you follow several days of the week or month that helps you to regulate your metabolism and slowly return your body to its most natural and balanced state. But keep in mind how you view the process of intermittent fasting in your head. If you're expecting it to work as a quick fix, just know that this is not sustainable either. Trust your body. A huge element of successful weight loss involves learning how to listen to your body correctly. 
This means feeding, moving, and being kind to your body when it needs you to be. A lot of health professionals overcomplicate weight loss by cornering it into one small element of a pie chart that relies on the entirety to achieve wholesomeness. Anyone who has experienced achieving weight loss and gaining it back will tell you that the satisfaction was very fleeting. Only by listening to our bodies and providing them with the nutrients, environment, and movement necessary to cultivate a balanced lifestyle can we hope to achieve our ideal weight. If intermittent fasting helps you to reach this point, great. View it as a tool which has helped you reach full awareness of your body. Don't get addicted, don't constantly fast, and don't expect to see changes overnight. So let's talk a, lot about, a little bit about research. Studies have shown that intermittent fasting can affect the functioning of your cells, your genes, and your hormones, as the altered pattern of your eating will ultimately release hormones necessary for cell growth and repair. Intermittent fasting is particularly effective regarding the hormones that have to do with your hunger, blood sugar, and metabolism. Reducing insulin resistance is extremely effective in lowering blood sugar levels and thus lowering your risk for developing type 2 diabetes. Cancer research has even been done and has suggested that periodic fasting can trigger improved cell regrowth and immune system repair, assisting the body's recovery from treatments such as chemotherapy. As well as using stores of glucose, prolonged periods of fasting also breaks down significant portions of white blood cells. This then triggers your own stem cell based regeneration of new immune system cells. Human growth hormone is known to be one of the most highly affected hormones in the body during a period of fasting. After six hours of a fast, this hormone goes into overdrive and starts producing the physiological results in the form of increased metabolism and fat burning. The proteins it produces, or amino acids, are used to improve brain and neurological functioning and also repairs collagen and helping with skin growth and repair while it does so. Insulin and human growth hormone work as opposites in this function. What about cardiovascular health? As fasting helps to reduce instances of inflammation, contributing to lower cholesterol, blood pressure, and overall weight, there are benefits for those seeking to improve their heart health. However, doctors also advise caution to these patients as electrolyte balances can occur, giving rise to arrhythmias or irregular heartbeats. There's still a lot of research to be done in this area regarding heart health and intermittent fasting. So if you're unsure or wary about trying it, again, as already discussed, it's best to discuss with your medical professionals before embarking on a period of fasting. So bottom line, it's the same that goes for any existing medical condition. If you wish to try losing weight with intermittent fasting, talk to your doctor first. Curiously, there have been some studies to show that intermittent fasting has been more successful in men than in women. This has to do with hormonal rates involved in metabolism and fat storage and takes into account centuries of women's activity levels being lower than those of men. If you consider the origins of intermittent fasting per, from the perspective of ancestral habits, this definitely should be taken into consideration when analyzing the difference in results between men and women. The idea is that because men were traditionally more involved in active hunting and sourcing of sustenance, women's bodies developed differently 
with higher reliance on fat storage and muscle stability for tending crops, children, and housework. Males and females inevitably also require and process hormones differently to each other. As we've already discussed the effects of intermittent fasting on hormones, it follows that different initial levels and types of hormones will produce different effects in response to fasting. So again, this is different for everybody. So overall, in terms of dieting and losing weight, it's best to be honest with yourself about why you want to achieve what you set out to when trying intermittent fasting. You'll find that motivation can come simply from taking the time to find out this why. The same goes for any kind of weight loss plan. If you have a clear goal with a clear motivation and clear steps to achieve it, it's difficult to fail. While there's still relatively little research done on the long-term effects of intermittent fasting, it can't be denied that enough people have experienced enough positive results from using the methods that we've discussed today for it to have become as widely discussed as it has. Being honest with yourself about these factors is also important. Honestly noting your reactions and responses that your body might have the fasting and seeking medical advice if you're not quite sure about the experience you're having. So take a couple minutes and think about what are your goals? How do you feel? Do you want to try intermittent fasting? Why do you want to try intermittent fasting? What do you think that you might achieve by trying it? And are you uncertain about any particular aspects about this? As you think about that, and if you're comfortable or you want to, please just go ahead and put those in the chat. Would love to hear some of that from you guys. We can talk about that at the end. <clears throat> so let's recap and discuss a few benefits of intermittent fasting and fasting in general. Just kind of drive home the point of why we might want to try intermittent fasting. Now, keep in mind, I'm talking about short-term fasts. I'm not talking about multiple days long fasting. So studies have shown that by doing short fasts, that we have the ability to regrow the myelin sheath on our neurons. This is the sheath that protects nerve cells and has been proven beneficial in conditions such as multiple sclerosis. People have seen weight loss. Seizures have been prevented in epileptics. It increases autophagy, so which is a recycling of cell components and a destruction of your weak proteins, weak mitochondria, getting rid of the cells that will be putting us at risk for cancer and other chronic diseases. You can see a reduction in inflammation. We also see a turning on of the cellular detox pathways. It trains your body to, and brain to use ketones for fuel. This is actually a superior fuel for your brain to function on than sugar. You can see an increase in your mitochondrial number and strength. So your mitochondria are the batteries of your cell per se. Fasting helps to grow new brain cells. It decreases free radicals and oxidative stress, which are at the core of chronic disease. Calorie restriction has also been shown to slow aging, prolong life, and reduces the risk of chronic disease. It also increases insulin sensitivity. It turns on your body's fat burning processes. It improves the balance of bacteria in your gut, leading to just better overall health and mood. So maybe what are some of the drawbacks? Well, irritability for one, 
Sometimes your brain will think that it's dying when it runs out of sugar, especially when we start and we don't know how to use ketones for fuel. Oftentimes we'll get an energy slump after eating. Just remember that you don't want to do this too often. Women in particular are at risk for complications with their hormones when they do a lot of fasting. So I, I'm a big fan of biohacking. So biohacking, when I'm talking about it, is just more of how can I take advantage of the things around me to help my body to function better or to do better at whatever it is I'm trying to. So the biggest point with this is be in tune with your own body and listen to it. But let's talk about some ways to maybe take your fasting to the next level, some kind of tricks per se. One, you need to drink lots of water uh, in a time when you're fasting. Uh, hydration is super important as we're mobilizing toxins. It also will help you not to feel so hungry. Unsweetened tea or coffee is okay. Give you something of flavor. Break your fast with a room temperature water with a squeeze of lemon in it. This will help with detoxification support. It will help stimulate your liver function and will help give you some additional vitamin C, which is super helpful and help keep, helps keep us healthy and helps our immune system anyway. What about when you're hungry? I'm hungry and I don't want to fast anymore. I'm just gonna grab something to eat. Wait a minute. So to hack your hunger, put a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in an eight ounce glass of water and drink that. Okay? Don't drink the apple cider vinegar straight. That's not good for you, it's too acidic, it's hard on your throat and on your teeth. Don't do that. But the apple cider vinegar, when it's diluted out in the water, helps balance blood sugar, helps balance your insulin levels, and will help you with hunger, and has a ton of other health benefits I'm not getting into today. Another option is something called MCT oil. Uh, this is derived from coconuts. You can take a teaspoon of the liquid or a gram in a, in a capsule form. If you want to know where to get some of this from, I can tell you. Uh, this actually helps you to be able to switch more into that ketogenic state, be able to have sharper brain function, not be so hungry, have a little bit more energy. You can take it straight or you can add it to coffee or tea. If you've heard of something called bulletproof coffee, uh, that generally is coffee with some grass-fed butter and also um, some MCT oil in it. Another way that you can biohack or hack your fast is that in the middle of your fasting period, exercise with a high intensity, but only for five to 10 minutes, okay? This can really turn your body, turn your body's fasting state into a fat burning machine, okay? Uh, it, it really will get your body switched from the burning sugar to burning fat. So, those are some extra tips and tricks that can be of benefit. Now, wanted to take a minute to talk a little bit about this because this is something that I'm super excited about and that I have started using in my practice. You are here today because I assume you're wanting to be healthier and you wanna upgrade your health but what I would ask you is, how are you measuring your health? Are you really healthy or are you just not sick? So let's think about it for a minute another way. 
if you want to know your blood pressure, you measure it, right? So if you want to know your health, how do you measure it? And I would propose to you that using bioenergy testing, which this is a picture of one of my patients actually doing her bioenergy test. Um, there's no patient identification stuff on the screen in any way, shape or form. And I took this photo with her permission. Um, but I am super excited about this technology. It has been super beneficial. It involves a few different types of tests and this is only, or a few tests that we do together that give us results, that give us insight as to how well you're aging and how healthy you are. Um, it has been really instrumental in some of the patients that I have right now and giving them insight into really how to eat correctly and how to exercise correctly for themselves, okay? So this test takes about an hour. It's really not anything to be scared of. The amount of exertion that you need to do to complete this test is fairly minimal you generally will start, get to a point where you're breathing a little bit hard and maybe just starting to sweat. And that's when the test is done. The test takes about an hour, okay? And about the, by the time the test is done, I can tell you a lot of information. So some of this information would be your adrenal function, what your basal metabolic rate is or how many calories you burn when you're not doing anything. I can tell you your biological age or how well you're aging, how many calories you should be taking in, what your fat to muscle ratio is, your fitness level, what's your heart function and your lung function, what's your optimal weight, are you eating too many carbohydrates? When you're exercising, how hard should you be exercising and what should your heart rate be? If you're trying to lose weight, how many calories should you eat to lose weight for you? I am not talking about just blanket general recommendations or using calculators. This is an actual measurement of how well your body is working. So who can benefit? And in addition to that, I can tell you if your thyroid is working well. <clears throat> so who can benefit from this test? Anybody who's looking to stay healthy, prevent diseases of aging, anyone who wants help with weight control, anyone who's wanting to maximize their workout efficiency, anyone who's wanting to slow down or see where they're at in the aging process, and anyone with arthritis, diabetes, heart disease, high cholesterol, this is an amazing test. And I really encourage all of my patients to do this. If you're interested in learning more about this, uh, please check out my website, valleyvitalmedicine.com. And in there, you can click on services and down from there, you will find bioenergy testing listed as one of the services. And you can actually register for a time to do this test right there. After this webinar, I'm gonna be sending out an email um, that will have resources attached to it and um, also some additional links and information that can help you kind of, that can help you make more sense of the information that we've talked about today, okay? I'm gonna start my video back up again here. Um, sorry, let me click here. So for today, that's my presentation for today. I hope it was something that was really beneficial for you. Um, if you have questions right now, please go ahead and type them in. Um, I'll chat for a couple minutes here as, um, as I'm waiting for some questions to come in. But I also, I'd love to hear some feedback from you as far as what did you think about this? Was this helpful for you? Are there questions? things that I didn't cover that you wish that I would? Are there other topics that you would like to see in a webinar format that would be helpful for you? Um, 
if you're not comfortable with asking those right now or you want to inquire about being a patient, please feel free to email me. You can always email me directly at uh, trevor at valleyvitalmedicine.com. Um, it's a, the, the best and the easiest way of uh, getting a hold of me. Uh, Jesse asks, you, you missed half of it, but you were interested in the second half and it was helpful. Yes, Jesse, I will definitely be sending out a link to all of the, uh, or to this presentation uh, when, uh, when, I'm, when I'm done here, hopefully maybe this afternoon or maybe tomorrow. So that will be coming out for you. Thank you so much for joining in when you did. I really appreciate you being here. Um, let's see here. Paul, I see that you have your hand up. Did you have a question? I can put on your microphone here too. Looks like you're you're muted on your hand. Um, on your end, if you want to unmute yourself, you can definitely come in and just ask a question if you like. Uh, Christina, how long would you expect your body to get used to this? How quickly would you start to see results with say a 16 and eight diet? So I would say, so kind of like we talked about during this webinar, everybody's kind of a little bit different. So it, it, it's hard to give a blanket response. Um, I know for me, like it took a few times and it, and it took uh, the right mindset to be able to get myself in a place where I was able to wake up in the morning and not think that I needed to eat right away. And so I have, um, you know, I've gotten to a point now where I kind of listen to my body too in the morning and it'll tell me, man, am I really hungry today? And on those days I'll have breakfast because my body's just telling me I need that. But if I wake up and I'm not super hungry, then I may say, you know what, this will be a good morning for fasting. I'm going to wait until lunch to eat today. Um, as far as how quickly to see results, you know, I think if you do this consistently and you do it, you know, even, even a couple days a week, you know, you should notice a, an improvement in your function and your, your, uh, your brain acuity also should start seeing some weight loss in, in that first month. Um, that would be something that I think that I would, I would expect and would be a reasonable thing. Um, but the, you know, one of the things that we really have to keep in mind is that when we're doing this intermittent fasting, we don't want to gorge ourselves when we come off of our fast. We want to make sure that we're still eating healthy foods. It doesn't give us the right to go out and eat a bag of potato chips or eat a huge bowl of ice cream. You know, we want to make sure that we keep a good balanced diet, eating good healthy foods, um, you know, a lot of vegetables, a lot of fruits, lean healthy meats, and a lot of good healthy fats. Uh, you know, a lot of omega-3 oils and um, the MCT oil that I discussed earlier. Um, also, um, grass-fed butter is good. Um, and avocados, of course. Uh, Jesse asked if I recommend 16-8 fasting. You know, I, I do for the average person, particularly if you don't have any particular health concerns. Um, I don't know you, Jesse, I don't think. Um, so uh, I don't see a last name, so I'm not quite sure who I'm talking to here. But um, I think for the average person, you know, it's one of those things that's definitely worth trying and uh, see how your body reacts to it. Do you feel good when you do it? Um, if you have any of the conditions that we talked about during our webinar that would put you at risk uh, for having a, a negative reaction. So if you have um, anxiety or blood sugar problems or other hormone problems or um, any eating disorder type tendencies, I'd say for, for you, it's maybe not a good fit, but you know, it would be a good idea then at that point to visit with your doctor about that. Okay, does that make sense? Christina says, could you do the 16 and eight by fasting from three or 4 p.m. through the end of the day? Yeah, I mean, there's, 
Yeah. I guess we talked about it as though just not eating breakfast, but I mean, you could eat breakfast and lunch and then fast again until the next morning. I mean, that's, that's definitely another way to, way to do it. Um, Jesse is 10 to 14 hour fast, just as beneficial as 16 hours. So there's a lot of opinions about this. Um, some of the, what I've been looking at and what I've been reading is that you actually are able to get about the maximum benefit out of your fasting by getting to a point of around that 20 to 24 hours of fasting actually. Um, so again, that's not something that I would suggest starting right away. You can kind of work your way up to that. Um, but yeah, around that 24 hour point is where you really uh, get the maximal benefit. And so it's kind of incremental from around that 16 hour to the 24 hour. Um, but from the information that I know and from what I understand and what I've been following around that 24 hour mark is super beneficial. Yep. I haven't done that yet, but I think I'm, I think I'm going to work myself up to trying it here, hopefully later this summer. Just got to get myself prepped for it. So Paul, I see you unmuted yourself now. Did you have a question? See if I can hear you. Or there is a chat in the bottom if you would rather type. Um, not here in you though. All right. Well, I guess you're, you're not coming through. If you have questions, please just send me an email. I'm more than happy to answer whatever questions you might have. Um, again, if you have questions about me or my practice, please feel free to check me out at valleyvitalmedicine.com. Um, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for coming in here today. Um, uh, let's see here. Oh, Jess, Jesse's got another question here. Thoughts about ketone supplementation, privet nats, beta hydroxybutyrate. Um, yeah, so I'm honestly not familiar with what privet nats is, um, but beta hydroxybutyrate. So when we talked about ketones, um, ketones are what your body produces um, when you're, when you run out of sugar, basically. Um, oh, prove it brand. Okay. Um, you know, I haven't looked a lot into, I know there's a whole nother supplement world that goes into, uh, ketogenic supplements. I, I am not super familiar with those. Um, you know, some of those, I think we really got to be careful with, um, I really prefer to stick with, um, like I said, MCT oil or apple cider vinegar, some of those things that will allow our body to kind of do what's natural and healthy. Uh, beta hydroxybutyrate is just another name for ketones. And so it'd be just a little bit of a ketone bump as far as how quickly your body is able to get into that ketogenic state. Um, you know, this talk wasn't particularly on a ketogenic diet per se. Um, so, um, so what I would say is, you know, just what I encourage people to do is really just do your research on each of the supplements that you're, um, that you're taking in, in your diet and lifestyle. Um, if you had, if you're going to have your bioenergy test, should you stop taking the supplement powder? Um, so you've been taking it for two and a half months. So honestly, what I would do, if you want to know where you're at with what you're doing, I would have you continue taking it up until the time that we do your bioenergy test. Now on the bio, on the morning of the bioenergy test, you don't take any supplements that day, but you do take, um, any hormones. Uh, if, if you're, uh, if you're on any hormones or prescription medicine, so you continue to take those. Um, 
but then you come in to do the bioenergy test fasting. And so, but without any extra supplements that morning. And so that's kind of what that would look like. Um, it's, like I said, it's a pretty easy test, but it gives us a lot of, a lot of good information. Okay. I hope that answered all your questions. Please let me know if it didn't. Um, uh, Paul is asking about the benefit of warm versus cold water. Um, you know, your, your body just digests warm water much easier. And it's also able to get more, um, it's, it's more hydrating because your body can absorb it easier. Uh, the, the cold water is kind of more of a shock to the body and uh, is, is not as beneficial as far as staying hydrated. Um, and so that's, that's the idea behind that. Okay. I'll give it maybe another minute or two to see if other questions come in. I really appreciate the questions. Thank you for, thank you for being interactive. Uh, Jesse, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for, she says, thanks for hosting the webinar. I appreciate you. I appreciate your feedback. Thank you for the interaction and the questions. That, that is super beneficial to me and uh, make, makes me, uh, gives me hope that you, that it was helpful for you and that you were uh, paying attention. So Christina, thank you for attending. Uh, please uh, feel free to email me always, you guys, uh, if you have any questions. Again, Trevor at valleyvitalmedicine.com. So uh, if there's no other questions. I guess we'll, uh, we'll sign off for today. Um, I'm, I'll be working at put, putting together another webinar maybe for next month. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys. Have an amazing day. Enjoy the beautiful summer weather and uh, make sure that you take some time to relax and take care of yourself and make sure that um, if you have questions that, that you ask your medical provider about whether things are right for you and uh, hopefully you give intermittent fasting a try if it's, if it's right for you. If you do and you have benefit with it or if you don't, uh, please email me, let me know and uh, we'll, any feedback is always, is always appreciated. So everybody have a great weekend. I appreciate you, love to you all. Have an amazing day, okay? Thanks everybody, bye-bye.